Oh, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hello, Jens. How are you? Great. I'm 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 fine, thanks. I was a little irritated. Um I couldn't couldn't start the, couldn't couldn't start the event. Um that's okay. But now, that's but, okay. now but now you can see me. That's good. Yes, that's yes, good. absolutely, absolutely. And I see a lot of people they join the webinar, interest rates uh, are on the on the go tonight, right? So let's see what's what's Mr. Powell we promise <laughs> to the yeah. world. Um, I think it, it it's getting it's certainly getting probably a little um how can I say um pathological that's probably a good word to put it so like um I mean there will there won't be a rate hike but um but the the thing is the question is what what they will deliver um on top of that I think oh this yeah is, yeah yeah I think this this is this is getting interesting to be honest exactly uh yeah so. We will see what's going to happen and we'll see how the dollar and the other markets will react on that rate. And yeah, many years, many bonds, they are on a good resistance. They are trying to break out. So we see when you are ready, you can. Uh, yeah, start. let me just, let me just, yeah. uh, let me just um, sub check something out here in the background i will take over in a few seconds where's the button so there we go one sec okay so let me just share my screen where's the top i can't find the top that's okay honestly <laughs> today zoom was playing a lot of games on the live trading session yen so i'm not surprised that you have any difficulties with with there, Zoom. no i'm still i can't, can't believe that so there we go okay there we have it so now you can see it yes ah beautiful yes. okay i wish you best luck <laughs> yeah thank you very much and uh, talk to you soon teo sure so um hello and good afternoon um I hope that um, everyone can see and hear me well. And um, so I just um, yeah want to get started uh, as, as usual. Today, what we want to focus on is um, the Fed rate decision. And uh, not only the Fed rate decision, but also what to expect and um, especially what to focus on. And um, I don't want to wait, waste um, too much time now introducing um, anything in, in regards to what, what we will see and so on and so forth. Um, very important, we talk about leverage products. And these leverage products, um, they... Um, uh, these, these leverage products, uh, they, they might not be suitable for all investors. And that being said, um, uh, means that here um, you have to make sure that you understand all risks involved. And um, in addition to that, that um, uh, you please read carefully through the risk disclaimer. Check out the website, admiralmarkets.com uh, for the full risk disclaimer. And uh, then if you um, download, first of all, download the demo, test um, uh, trading, test test the waters and uh, find out whether these products are suitable for you. And um, I mentioned that especially because um, we will probably talk about potential trading setups in the upcoming minutes. And uh, that being said, means that, um, first of all, please make sure you understand the risks involved, but also that nothing um, here I present to you um, should be misunderstood um, as a financial advice or something, but it's purely educational, purely informational. And um, that's very, very important to, to remember. Um, I don't think that I need to introduce Admirals as a broker any further. Fully regulated, fully regulated broker, SISEC, FCA regulated, ASIC regulated, um, very competitive offering when it comes to FX trading, when it comes to DAX trading. Also here, check out the website. Um, also, I recommend checking out the Admirals mobile app here. 
in regards um, uh, to trading via your smartphone, respectively. Um, probably very important and, and, and very interesting if you're planning to invest longer term. Um, very, very interesting features you will find there. For example, um, you know, probably you are aware of um, the fractional shares offering. And uh, based on your deposit size, um, it's directly calculated how much um, uh, fractions of a share you can buy to, to, to make it that way. Um, so you don't have to calculate anything um, um, yourself like you have to if you're using the MT4, MT5 especially. Um, but within the mobile app, this is um, done um, straightforward and automatically. So very, very interesting in this regard. And um so that's it um, in regards to the to the introduction. And now we want to focus here on uh, the FatWatch tool and the dot plot. Um, but probably this is a little um, too much already. So first of all, let's head over. This is, by the way, FinWiz, but um, we want to head over here to the website, admiralmarkets.com. So we accept all cookies. And then we head over here to the Analytics tab and Forex calendar. And we check out... Today, just the United States and the most important highest impact events, apply the filter. And then you will see here, so this is today, Fed interest rate decision. Today is the 20th of September. And um, at 7 p.m. UK, the Fed interest rate decision will take place. And that's what is expected right now. 5.5, respectively, 525 to 5.5%, 5.25 to 5.5%. That's what's expected. And um, why is that expected? How can we measure that? How can we know that this is expected? Therefore, we head over to something we know as the Fed Watch tool. And there you can see the big column here, 99%. This is, let me just share the link here so that you can check this out yourself. Fed watch tool. There we go. Um, so you have a 99% um, um, chance of today seeing a rate hike of 525 to 550. Um, and that's, that's in fact what the market is expecting. So once the likelihood is greater than 50%, this is usually what we can say the market is expecting. Um, and so... 99% speaks for itself. We don't need to, to um, um, overcomplicate things here. This is what the market expects. Now you might say, well, but there's 1% chance that there will be a hike today. Yes, that's true. But we have to remember that we are looking here at the futures and the options market. And, and we extract these um, um, probabilities out of the options market, especially. And um, how options are priced right now. And um, just imagine now, as you can see, the the, the likelihood of such a um, step taking place or what the market is pricing in right now is 99%. And now um, the Fed, the Fed does not really have a reason to uh, um, to 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 um, diverge here. Let's say based on inflation data. Well, yeah, we saw an uptick there, but. Um, there won't be a surprise because there will be naturally, if you now surprise, um, a so-called disruption of the market. And that's definitely something to keep an eye on and to keep this in mind. And uh, so that being said means, okay, um, in this regard, then um what we what we certainly um um should be should be um um be aware of is um what beyond that should be expected from the Fed. Um, and there you can now already see we have, oh, let me just here open there. We have now the Fed Watch tool and we go into the future till December, 2024. I highlighted this here, but especially here, the dot plot is of interest for us. And now you might wonder, okay, where do we get the dot plot from? And um, today is a special um, FAT rate decision effect because the special the speciality is out of the fact that we also will get a new economic projection. So what is economic projections? Every March, June, September, as now, and December, we will get this economic projections paper, PDF here, which um, which 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 consists in addition to the rate decision out of the participants submitted projections of the most likely outcomes for real gross domestic product, GDP growth, the unemployment rate and inflation for each year from 2023 to 2025. In addition to that, 
what each voting member of the FOMC expects rates to be um, at a at the end of 2024, for example. And this is what we usually refer to as the so-called dot plot. And this is what you get here. And now this is where, where things are getting interesting. Because as you can see, um, there you have the dots. And um, for 2023, they um, moved up, in fact. So 525, uh, I'm sorry, 500 to 525. This is where we stood in March. And then we moved higher. And that was surprising because we already saw inflation coming down. And this is especially um, um, important to, to note here because um, there's a fight right now um, to, to bring inflation back to the target rate around 2%. And um, that was surprising because um, inflation was already significantly below the target rate here um, in June. But still, the Fed said, well, we continue to expect higher rates from here. Um, in fact, 50 basis points higher rates, which brought us here with um, 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 with the with with the with, with the dots up to 550 to 575. And uh, the question is, in fact, will these dots move down today, or will they stay as you can see it here? So this is, in fact, the question. The first question we have to answer. So probably I open a sheet here to give a, a better overview of this, one second. So let's say it's um, one, more, one, one second. Let me just increase that here to tw probably 20. The first question, first question, where will the dots for 20, 20, Remove. Will they move up or will they stay? So, will I'm sorry, not up. Will they move down to the current rate level, uh, the, the current target rate? The current target rate um, is 525. Oh, I'm sorry, to 550. Or Will they stay at 550 to 575? Wait, 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 let me just check out something here in the background. Hmm. Okay, great. And um, so this is in fact the first question. And there's a second question we have for today. And it's the, the thing is the first question the first question i'm sorry question second question um it depends on how important um no in fact i don't think that this is um, um i mean we, we certainly should um Karim just posted everybody we should listen to Powell during the meeting. I don't think so. Um, it's certainly important to keep an eye on that, but I don't think it's very important today. Um, I don't think he will he will say anything significantly different from what we um, heard from the Fed earlier. But I, I think every information we need um is in fact here within the dot plot. That means that really right at 7 p.m. there will be. Um, an initial move, and I could really remember. Um, I could really imagine a follow through from here. So higher or lower depends a little on um, 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 in which direction we will we are we are headed from here. But I don't think that this time the um, 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 press conference is of that importance. It's certainly important, no question about that. And certainly, um, let me just check out here. Um, and it's certainly um, 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 important to to remember here that um, uh, um, um in, the, in, the, in this regard there could be some hints um which which could then potentially trigger a reversal move or something like that but first of all we should really focus here especially on the dot plot today um and not that much on the press conference which takes place half an hour later so at um, um 7 30 p.m london so coming back now to the dots um the question for the second question is where will the dots for 2024 move? That's the second question. And that's very interesting too, because as you can see here, 
Now you might say, oh, look here, it's 425 to 450, which is not true um, because the um, there, there are more dots at 450 to 475 and higher. In fact, you just have to count them through. You get seven plus three is 10. And here you have six plus two, it's eight. So it's 10 above that level, which means um, currently the expectation it's not just it, it, what the dot plot tells us or to told us in June was 450 to 475. And this corresponds well with what the market is expecting based here on the options market for 2024. This is the last column you get here. And there you can click on and then you get 450 to 475 and add up everything here below that. This is what the majority of market participants in the options market expects, which means right here, we are at around 65, 66% um, probability that at the end of 2024, here rates will be at 450 to 475. So this is interesting because as you can see, the dot plot, the dot plot is or corresponds with what the options market is expecting. Why is it noteworthy? Well, look at what December is telling us. December is telling us with a likelihood of 60%, so more than 50%, the majority is expecting that there won't be any further rate hikes um, in 2023. So, and there's still one left based on what the dot plot delivered here um, in June. And so this is exactly why we asked the question, where will the dots move for 2023? And this is exactly this is exactly um um here, what what um 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 why this is of importance and and why we should remember that, um, so looking now at the dots here brings us to the next question. So, the question is, will the dots move higher? Will the dots move lower. That's in fact exactly where we are right now. Meaning dots move lower means in fact, well, just imagine they move down to 525 to 550 here, this scenario. And then we'll see that the dots move lower for 2020, uh, 2024 too. That's in fact, telling us, okay, and it's not just that we're done with hiking rates, but in addition to that, um, we should also expect the Fed to cut rates in 2024 more aggressively than it's currently anticipated based on what the options market is telling us. And this is something which will then, and that's why I, I highlight this in, in, in green now, which is usually bullish for like equities or equity indices like the S&P, like NASDAQ, like gold, for example. So this is usually a scenario I would, I would say this is green for equities. And if we stay at 550 and the dots don't move higher, um, or, or they, they move higher, they move higher or only slightly higher. Um, that's in fact a scenario where I would say, well, in this scenario here, um, I would expect the market to interpret it as hawkish, which is bearish for equity indices, but also for equities in general, probably, but also for, for gold. And certainly, so these are the, let's say the extremes to some extent, I, I wouldn't really call it extreme, but um, um, it's, it's, it's kind of like a, um, 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 a scenario um, um, where you say, okay, this is the more dovish, this is this is more dovish or clearly dovish, while the other is um, 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 more hawkish in this regard. And uh, so that being said, then leaves us with some in between um, um, things. Like for example, we move down to 525, 550, which is kind of bullish for equities, but the dots for 2024, they move higher, which means like we are higher for longer. So this is how we could interpret this um, in, 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 with, with, with our words. Or we keep rates here at, for example, 550 to 575, 
Um, so the dot plot stays the same for 2023. So there's a further rate hike to be expected in December, while we move more or more aggressively lower for 2024, which is a very unlikely scenario, in my opinion, in fact. So it, if you ask me, I'd go for the current here highlighted in red scenario. So I would say I expect, um, in fact, not just the Fed to continue um, here uh, or to, to, to stay at this level in terms of the dot plot for 2023. But I also expect, in fact, the um, levels here, the dots to move higher from there. So in fact, that the Fed stays higher for longer to probably right now already um, prepare the market to some extent that inflation will stay elevated due to recent developments. You probably recall we had um, trading spotlight webinars here together. Um, and I, I was saying, well, it's no big surprise that inflation is coming up now after and now has head over to the charts like WTI oil is moving significantly higher from here. So there was a clear breakout to new yearly highs and we are pushing higher. We continue to push higher right now. We are obviously... we traded above and still trade slightly above 90 USD per barrel. So these are the highest levels since October 2022, for example. So we are finding resistance here. So probably from a trading perspective, quite interesting to note. And potentially there is there's room for pulling now to the higher 80s, probably, probably lower 80s, let's see. Um, but all in all, we are significantly trading higher. And since inflation came down due to WTI oil price is coming down. Well, that's certainly a clear sign here in this regard um, that that there that the, the, the market is um, um, right now realizing. Okay, inflation is probably staying higher, which would lead then the Fed to say, "Well, we have to continue to hike rates or stay at least significantly higher and probably above five percent to have a good chance to bring inflation down." to our target rate around or target um, around 2%, in fact, within, let's say, the next 12 to 18 months, probably. Um, and this is exactly what we are what we are focused on. The question now is, OK, um, if we go, let's say uh, we are we are going for my scenario here. Um, and okay, let me just check out something. OK, let's see. One second. Hmm. Okay. Um, so let's assume we really get the scenario I, how can I say that? Um, favor, ah, favoring this, this scenario. Um, so we'll stay here and then we move higher with 2024 and the dots there. So the question is then, okay, um, which assets are of my interest in such a scenario or in general, what, 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 what markets do I want to focus on? So what we in fact do right now is game plan here through, um, um, we, we game plan through, through the FAT already right now. And I would say, well, my main focus is currently on the S&P 500 and on the NASDAQ 100. So, and that being said, um, and, and in addition to that, probably gold. Um, so then I head over to the NASDAQ and I say, okay, if I focus on the NASDAQ, um, I will focus here short term on the picture on a 30 minute chart. Probably here. Oh, it's a 50. It's okay. That's fine. Um, and then I would say, okay, um, if I, and that's, that's why I highlight here, um, I highlight here in red, so I expect a bearish reaction in equities in the NASDAQ in this regard. So that means that the main focus is likely on the lows, especially from yesterday. Let's probably zoom out a little here. So we're currently seeing um, we, to some extent, top out over the course of the last something like six weeks. Um, after we came in lower over the course of um, August in general, then we bounced. And now you can see the market is somehow topping out after seeing some 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 buying, but not making it to new highs. Let's probably go to an hourly chart here in this regard to just highlight this. So these are the yearly highs. So we had a lower high from there. And then over the course of um, the month of August, we saw a drop. 
and bounced, but didn't make it up to the highs from August or at least, yeah, well, highs of August, ex exactly. Lower high and now rolling over again. Currently trading around in, in case of the queues, if you just look at the spot market um, below the five um, day moving average. And that's that's noteworthy because this is, at least for me, a sign of um, bears are in control. And um, so this is adding to my thesis from a technical standpoint. And then I say, okay, um, the main focus is in fact on the lows from yesterday. We we flush below that level. You can see it here, but bought, where bought back? yesterday so there there were there were the lows that were the lows from september till yesterday then we broke lower and then we bounced from there and now holding back above that level so that was in fact a kind of a flush out to some extent in fact on the downside and um as you can see now okay um we are holding but the question remains will that be the case after the fat and if the fat comes out the way i um um expect her to come out like more hawkish than expected i don't think so even though i'd like price action to confirm my thesis in a way that i say well i want to see a break below 15070 here on the downside and then i want to be short um once we break below and we hold below there's a clear sign that that we are we are breaking lower and then holding below that level i could in fact imagine that probably in the upcoming minutes. So we are right now seeing the market opening um, that we're probably going for, for, for some stops, which are probably here in this area. So just imagine you're shorting um, the break lower or the bounce back towards that level. I, you probably have your stop around 15,270 or something. And I could imagine that before, probably during the Fed, there will be a spike up here to that level. And we are um, getting these stops triggered in the um, 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 in the in first instance, and then we roll over and and see some some selling. Let's see how things how things play out. But what I can certainly um 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 say is that as long as we trade be, um, above the highs, I'm sorry, as we, long as we trade above the lows from yesterday, I don't want to be short. Even then, if I get such a scenario as as you can as you can see here highlighted with the dots moving higher, um. And in fact, that's it. Yeah, that's it for the for for the Nasdaq. Probably, I would say of the Nasdaq due to its yield sensitivity. Sens sensitivity. Um, I probably say, um, it's probably even more interesting than the um S and P five hundred. Even though we can certainly say, even though we can we can certainly say, uh, that right here, um. The picture looks really the same, but I I think that we get a let's call it bigger bang for the buck. Um, the moment um we are looking at the Nasdaq due to again the the the, the factor main factor that it's um tech related and that that tech stocks usually move faster respectively respond um more aggressively towards um um developments in the uh in the yield curve. That's probably a good way to put it. And um, so um, that being said, well, leaves us in fact with, I focus on the NASDAQ, probably also here we get a slight spike above, but once we break below the lows here, which were marked yesterday around 4,420, 4,417, some, somewhere here. Um, and if we hold it below, then I consider the um, S&P a potential short candidate, even though I have to admit, um, that that is also a reason why I want to focus here on the on the Nasdaq. Um, if we draw such a trend line, we can see that from a technical perspective, this is a key level. We are trading around the fifty um, um, day moving average, and we are trading around this trend line. And once we break below that level, and this is what a scenario here with the break below yesterday's lows means. Um, this could trigger further weakness, which could quite quickly, quite quickly doesn't mean necessarily today, but in the upcoming days and into the quarterly close, um, down to 14,600 points. And is probably good for, for a stronger move, risk reward wise, than a move here in the S&P. Where I have to say... Um, I'm not really seeing the technical relevance of the of the current region 
Um, I think this is this is more interesting when I look um, at, at the NASDAQ. And here I see a test of the region probably around, uh, somewhere around probably 5% lower than um, um, in the upcoming days than if, if we break below the levels here. And so risk reward wise, I think the NASDAQ is um, of higher interest for us. And um, so that's it on the equity indices. Um, any questions? Um, anything you, you'd like to 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 be covered, or um, shall I move on and uh, paint a picture or, or draw a picture for the gold price here in this um, in this case? No questions. That's good. <laughs> okay. So then uh let's move on. Um with, with gold. So gold is um more difficult. That's probably a good way to put it. Oh, there's another question. Yes. Yes. So I wouldn't I, I don't want to be per, um, um 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 trading right now. So I, I have no position on. Um and I really want to wait for a clear confirmation. So first of all, what, what do we get to see? So I have some scenarios. So this is my favorite one. I don't really know whether this will play out or not. And then based on my, my scenarios here, um, I would say, okay, if this is confirmed and we're getting the break below that level, this is my reason to act. This is my reason to 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 look for for, for a trade in there. Um no, in fact, so in fact, I, I really want to see. When looking at the Nasdaq here, I really want to see breaking yesterday's lows and then potentially um, a bounce back and hope below that level. That's probably put it that way. So, um, so I, I really I don't want to want to trade straight into the break. That's that's something I don't want to do. But in fact. What I what I'd like to see then is we break below that level, and we are probably playing, seeing a clear sign that we are holding below. So here, okay. So I I don't want to I want to draw I don't want to draw now too many lines, but um. So we are holding be holding below that level, and this is then potentially the reason when we can make it above that breakout level, then to to enter a short into a retracement. But I don't want to want to want to let's say short like um, a fake out here on the upside or something like that. So if we if we break above that level, even if we are searching for liquidity, probably we get some other chances to to short then into into pops because you you say um, um I don't want to wait for for such a such a sharp decline of one hundred fifty points. Um, but in fact, I want to, for example, say I'm looking at the queues, the ETF on the Nasdaq 100, and I want to see um, um, this, 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 this pop into yesterday's highs. We are rolling over, and once we drop back below, let's say the volume weighted average price, this is my sign to act, and then I'm, I'm taking a short, for example. Um, that's that's a more aggressive approach. But in my case, right now, I really want to have a clear confirmation in terms of price breaking below that level, and then I'm taking it from there. Not directly shorting it once we drop below that level, but dropping below, holding below, probably tight consolidation below that level, and then shorting another drive lower from there and with a clear sign of, of, of us holding below that level. Um, so then the question, um, gold. In case of gold, it's um, the scenario I pointed out is not very optimistic. It's in fact a reason to be skeptical and see another attempt of a, a, a push down to 1,900 USD per ounce, in fact. Um, overall, I'm still bullish on gold. So in fact, I'm to some extent willing to see um, such a bounce in my scenario or such another retest of 1,900, but then a clear hold, despite the fact that the market is um, currently expecting the Fed here to um, 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 stay higher for longer in terms of yields, which is usually a bad sign for gold. So gold will, I think, extraordinarily perform once um, there are clear signs that the rate hike um, cycle is not just done, that but rate cuts are around the corner. And once we get this, I think 
gold has a very solid chance to see a very significant um, 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 run higher. And then when I say significant higher, I, I don't really talk about intraday setups, but it's more like an invest opportunity. So where I say I could really imagine um, within the next five years, gold to double from there. And and, and I could, um, in fact, um, um, prove, prove that to some extent, respectively um, um, illustrate this by looking at um, the... By looking at the at the um, um, development over the course of the last 20, 25 years till 2000 around, we've seen that several times that there were rate hike cycles, rate cut cycles, and the rate cuts um, 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 environment, gold performed um, extraordinarily, real, really doubling in price and even more than that. Um, um, and that's certainly something to keep an eye on, even though right now with such a scenario, very, very short term, I could really imagine such another flush lower. And um, I don't really want to be long gold, longer term, in fact, um, below 1,985. Um, in case here of, 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 of the overall picture we are currently seeing, um, in fact, overall, that looks quite strong, what gold is presenting but uh, this week so far. But um, I want to be honest, I don't like this at all uh, because we are breaking here above 1,930 before the Fed, before the fundamental catalyst is through. And this is something I really don't want to see. Um, I really want to see a break above um, um, that level here in this regard um, um, and, and the hold after the announcement. And um, even though it's it's okay, I mean, worse would be like spray, spraying higher. We are trading the break higher for a momentum scalp or something like that. And then we are we are flashing back right below um, of the breakout level. So we are, we are, we've tested this now three times here um, since Monday, in fact. Um, but still, the problem is uh, that we need a confirmation um, from 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 the Fed, and in my expectation, this is not what will confirm the breakout, but in fact, will likely um, reverse the month uh, the, the 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 run we've seen so far over the course of the last days. It's not much, like three percent or so, um, um, but. I could imagine that we fail to continue higher if we get such a, let's call it hawkish um, 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 statement from the Fed and push back and potentially break back below 1,930. If we get to see that, then I could imagine um, the tops to be in and there's another potential run down for 1,900. And then we need to see whether we can hold that level or if we break below that level. Um, and till then... I, I, I really don't want. I, I really don't want to trade gold. Um, and and be be taking any positions here. Um, so right now. So in fact, um, I'd be long once we break above one thousand nine hundred eighty-five. Probably some might argue, say, hey, if we take out the NFP highs from earlier this month, um, and break above one thousand nine hundred and fifty, well, probably this is um, um a first sign of further bullishness to be expected, and at least a test of the region around one thousand nine hundred eighty-five. Um, but as long as we trade below that level, I don't want to be really long. More aggressive gold traders will likely say, well, I'm fine with um, gold making it above and holding off 1,930. But again, um, if you are if you have this bullish bias, be really, really careful. So right now it looks bullish as we pointed out. Um, but the thing is, if we get the more hawkish stance, like, we keep a dot plot and there's still speculation, expectation that there's another 25 rate hike into the yield close. And in addition to that, the dots move higher for 2024. So there is some higher rates for a longer period of time than initially anticipated. This could um, then mean that we are about to see a significant drop back below 1,930. Um, and this is then probably for a short term um, um, trade. It's interesting then to probably also trade the short side I, I really I, again I don't want to um trade it from the short side but um if if we get to see the drop below that level I probably let's put it differently let me just do it that way so one second so here's the breakout level breakout area Okay, so if we're now pushing higher and then flash below and hope below 1930, 
then some traders might argue, okay, well, this is this is a potential reason to short gold, to expect a move in the upcoming days, probably in the quarterly close, down to 1,930, risking against the highs of today, seeing wherever they might, might, might be. I don't really want to see significantly higher prices here, like like risking 15 USD or something like that, because um, if I'm aiming for 1,900, um, so 9, 915 in this case, uh, I'm sorry, 15 based on 945, 30 to 945, um, brings us to 15 USD per um, um, ounce risk. And then I'm going for 900 and I'm aiming for 30 USD per ounce on the downside. Well, I get a risk reward of one to two, which is not so attractive to be honest. So I really like to 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 see after the push, whatever right now um, that the push is coming from, um, I want to see, I want to see slight push higher and then rolling over right now. And then I'd, I'd appreciate to come in with the risk of something like 10, 10 USD per ounce or something to, to have a better risk reward. But let's see how, how things play out. Um, right now, you don't want to be short. Again, you want to be short if we get rejected, if we get um, a flashback below 1930, if we get the fundamental catalyst to be short or skeptical in terms of gold and a more hawkish stance is not very optimistic or positive for gold. And then if we drop back below 1930 uh, um, and hope below, then we have also a potential reason to, 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 to short here and expect gold to probably go for another stint down to 1,900 uh, USD. And... That's it. So I hope you take something out of today's webinar and um, have a good idea on um, what to focus on. Again, there's two questions I would ask. It's not about rate hikes, um, but it's like, where will the dots for 2023 move? And where will the dots for 2024 move based on the so-called dot plot? Um, I shared, let me, by the way, let me just see. I, I think I didn't share um, the economic projections. No, I, I shared the Fed Watch tool, but I didn't share the link here. No. Okay. Let me just here type it into the chat box EP for economic projections. And um, so this is, this is um, for June and you can then at 7 PM UK, you can change this here. 06 is 09 and today is the 20th. So 20th, usually 7 01 PM, you get um, uh, here the economic projections for September. And then you just have here a screenshot and then you put the new dots next to it and then you check it out um, um, where the dots moved in fact to answer the question did they move higher did they move lower you potentially also see it in terms of the chart but first of all i'd like to double check here where the the, the rates moved what i expect is clear because i i wrote it down and then i will i will move to the chart and see if the reaction is the same if we get such a in my interpretation hawkish dot plot but the market reacts bullish to that that's a positive sign because it shows that market priced most of this um, hawkishness already um, um, into the the, the the reprise. And this is probably then a trigger for further bullishness um, in the upcoming days. Um, while if it comes out more dovish, which is unlikely, but still an option, and the market reacts bearish to that, that's a very weak sign. So that's also something to, to keep in mind. Um, but first of all, check out the dots, check out um, um, whether or how they moved, and then um, take it from there. And um that's it for my end. So happy trading. Watch your stops and uh, talk to you again then next week. I really look forward to it. See you there and bye-bye.